and you find out that there are things that they portray Jesus saying, like recently, I am the law. For the law came by Moses, but grace and truth through Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what the Bible says, and that's what the chosen says. Which one's right? Hey, welcome back to Bible Line. I'm your host, Pastor Jesse Martinez. And today we're doing an advice video. We had a listener write in and she was looking for some guidance about particular things. So this is what she says. What does the Bible say about movies like the Chronicles of Narnia that are supposed to glorify God yet fail to mention Jesus Christ's name? And is C.S. Lewis a pagan or is he a true Christian? Now I know that's kind of like a double question, but I decided to give advice on this because now, the Bible doesn't specifically say, but there are things that the Bible does say that we can apply to these issues. So as you see in the title here, it's, you know, what do we do about movies and TV shows that are, you know, from a Christian perspective? I'll start with C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis attempted to teach doctrine in narrative form. And there's some great stuff that, that Lewis has written. However, you got to really dig to find out what the man believed about eternal life. And you find out a lot of what he believed was kind of a universalist idea, like we're all getting there, and he wasn't really clear. That becomes a problem, especially when we see that there's an opportunity to win people by gaining an audience like that, but you never give the gospel. I always think that's a red flag. I, we did a series one time, and you can go to Sermon Audio on calvaryoftampa.org, and you can search. There was a series called um, Always Give an Answer or something like that, and it was about apologetics. And I went through the top 20 Christian apologists and tried to find their gospel. And I think I found three. That's a huge problem. That there are 17 that did not have any gospel that I could find about how does a person go to heaven. And the three that I did, it was a Calvinistic message. Surprise, surprise. People say that Calvinism is leaking into the church. It is, it is not leaking into the church. It flows through it now. And many of you who are watching understand that. So... If we look at the question again and we try to recognize what do we do with Christian content, Christian media? Well, there's a biblical command that we are not to love, excuse me, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And that's in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. So if there's content that we're consuming out of this almost, almost like we're addicted to it, like we've got to see it all the time and it motivates our service, it motivates our love for God that can become a problem. And this is where I come down on it. And again, this is why I say this is an opinion piece. This is an advice video. When the Bible says there love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, I've got to be careful that the Christian movies or Christian content or even worship music that I listen to, number one, does not replace my own personal prayer life, my own personal devotional life and study of the word and fellowship with like-minded believers and responsibility to soul win. And I'm like, well, you know, I'll, I, I have, we'll just use The Chosen as an example. And I know that puts some people on their heels. But they'll say, well, I watched The Chosen, so I have my devos. You know, like, oh, I, I, I watched some documentary on the King James Bible. So, yeah, I really fulfilled my responsibility. And that leads me into my second point. Most of the Christian content that is produced today actually does greater harm than it does any good. They use Jesus' name. They use his likeness. <laughs> they use the stories from the New Testament. They use stories from the gospel. Sadly, the chosen is one of the biggest offenders. I mean, the guy who is doing it, he's a Mormon guy. He's an LDS guy. And you find out that there are things that they portray Jesus saying, like recently, I am the law. For the law came by Moses, but grace and truth through Jesus Christ. Okay, that's what the Bible says, and that's what the chosen says. Which one's right? And you have to come to a conclusion that you'll see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 in verse 13. Don't forget, if this is your first time here or you've been here before, make sure that you like, comment, and share this video. Also, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Set the notifications to all because now we have live streams that come out three times a week, four times actually, and we've got community posts where we ask for your feedback. So make sure that you hit the notification bell so you're notified when anything comes up. Also, we now have a Bible Line Audio exclusive podcast that comes out once a week on all of our podcast channels. It's going through personal evangelism. So make sure you check it out. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeart, all that good stuff. And leave us a five-star rating. That helps build up some good credibility 
for the people that like that kind of thing. And lastly, before we get back to our question, send in your questions, questions at BibleIMinistries.org, and we will do our best to get you at least a written answer and maybe even make a video like today. Let's get back to our answer. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 13 says this, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Why do I bring this up? Because I think this is where a lot of Christian content is today. And I use Christian in air quotes. I think it talks about Jesus, but it doesn't teach any Bible truth. And as a matter of fact, it teaches against what the Bible says. So let's ask this question. If the devil is blinding the minds of them that believe not, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, do you think that he would use Christian content to do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I'm not going to get legalistic here and say, you shouldn't do anything like that. I'm going to tell you, be careful. And I'm telling you that out of love. Be careful that you're not watching these shows and they're informing how you read the scripture. Here's another personal opinion of mine. I don't watch anything that portrays Christ. Because I, the, I, 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 I never have, like I've never seen The Passion of the Christ. I don't watch the, I don't watch the Chosen for you know, obvious reasons. They, they kind of take a lot of liberty there, creative liberty. My only understanding of who Jesus is is based on what the Holy Spirit has shown me in the Scripture. I don't want to get an image in my head or get an emotional feeling on a scene that I saw on a show or an actor's performance and start thinking about that person when I pray to the Lord. I, I just don't want to do that. That's protection for myself. And I give that advice to other people. It's going to be up to them whether they use it or not. But I think more often than not, when you run Christian content today from Christian media, when you run it through the veracity of the scriptures, the Bible doctrines that the Bible clearly teaches, they just fall short. And you find out, well, these people look like the apostles of Christ. They look like ministers of righteousness, but they are false apostles. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. So, of course, if I find out that people are watching The Chosen and stuff, I mean, they're not kicked out of my church. <laughs> I just think, you know, if, if it comes up in conversation and there's an opportunity to teach about it, I'll tell them what the issues are. And this is with any content. I think the biggest area is Christian worship music. Go read some, some, some lyrics without listening to the music and you're like, wow, the Bible really never said that. So why are we singing it? You can come to that conclusion. Remember, of course, Paul became all things to all men that he might reach more. So I'm not saying you cocoon yourself and, you know, I just got my King James Bible and that's it. I'm never going to go out and talk to anyone ever again. You need to know these things so you can better... Uh, reach people, but we're not supposed to love them, nor are we supposed to put them on a pedestal. And ultimately, you just should, okay, yeah, I see that. And you, you move on. Use discernment, know the tactics of the enemy, and lead a life of righteousness. You know, reach people with the gospel. Be ready to have a gospel conversation. Someone mentions the chosen or some weird worship song, lead it into a gospel conversation. Where are you going to go when you die? Do you have 100% assurance that you'll be in heaven? Do you want to know? Instead of arguing with them about, oh, I can't believe how silly you are that you do X, Y, and Z. Be careful. Let's not cause division. Let's lead people to the Lord. That'll be it for today. So make sure that you send in your questions. Questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. Until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. If you enjoyed today's episode of Bible Line, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Do you have a Bible question? Send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, and we'll do our best to get you an answer. Or you can leave your question in the comments of this video. Be sure to check the links in the description for more clear Bible teaching. Bible Line is a ministry of Calvary Community Church located in Tampa, Florida.